Hello, this is Rhett Elaine, and we're going to look at Fruit Ninja, the physics of Fruit Ninja. So let's get started. So this is the game. The idea is that you should slice with your finger these fruit as they fly up into the air, but not the bombs. It says it right there. It's, it's a pretty straightforward game, also quite fun, but there's physics here too. Let's get to the physics. So in physics, any object in the air that only has the gravitational force on it is what we call projectile motion. So it doesn't matter which way it's moving, if the only gravitational force on it is acting down, then there's two things. It has a constant horizontal velocity, there's no forces acting in the horizontal direction, so the velocity doesn't change. And there's constant changing vertical velocity, or constant acceleration. So we have these two kinematic equations that we use to describe projectile motion. Um, I won't go into a lot of the math, but it's out there if you want it. I'll give you some links. Okay, so that's projectile motion. Does the Fruit Ninja game have projectile? Is it projectile motion? If you went through the video and marked the location of one piece of fruit in a, one of those tosses, this is what you'd get. The blue line is the data for the horizontal position. And you'll see that it increases position regularly over time. That's constant velocity. So that's good. It looks like constant velocity in the fruit. The yellow orange, I mean the orange line is for the vertical motion and it looks like a parabola. And that's what we would expect. If you look at that previous equation for the vertical position, it was a parabola. So, so these two things say, this looks like it is indeed projectile motion. Now we can do some, some fun things. Because it's, it's not fun just to play the game. you got to do something fun, too. Okay, so the first thing is to look at and find out how big the fruit is. So in this case, again, I chose the scale of the video such that each one of these boards was one meter, quote meter, wide. They're not a meter wide, but that's just what I picked, one unit. And that's what I'm calling M prime, because it's not me. I don't know how big they are. And then I can go through and mark the location. Here's a vertical motion for one of the objects, and I can find the acceleration. Now, if you look back at the kinematic equation, the term in front of the t squared is one half the acceleration. So I have this negative 2.3, so the acceleration would be twice that. So it's negative 4.6 fake meters per second squared. Okay, so I don't know. That's not a meter. But I'm just calling it something. Now here's the trick. If I assume that this fruit is on Earth, then I know what the acceleration should be. It should be negative 9.8 meters per second squared, real meters. So I can just use that to solve for the size of one meter in the game, to a real meter, and I get my fake meters are 2.1 real meters. Okay, so I've assumed the time is right, I've assumed it's on Earth, and then I've used that to solve for the distance scale. So what does that mean? Who cares how big that is? Well, let's, let's see what matters after that. Now I can go measure the actual size of the fruit. Here's a banana, and you see a scale on there, it's 1.5 meters long. And that's 4 feet 10 inches for, you know, America. Okay, so here's a picture of me uh, at Stennis NASA and next to a 4 foot 10 inch banana. Yep, that's a big banana. Okay, so it's there's a problem. Now I'll tell you about why there's a problem. Um, but in the end. So what about just as a homework assignment? What if you look at the apple? Here's an apple on the game, and it's 75 centimeters wide, and here's a real apple. Um, I didn't measure the distance, but I thought it was a nice picture. My daughter took it. Um, so you could try to figure out how big that apple really should be, how, what would it look like in real life. Make a 75 centimeter apple. I mean, that's, that's big. Okay, it's big. Bigger than a watermelon. Okay. But there's something else we can do. What if the scale is correct in the game. What if the apple is really apple-sized? In that case, there has to be something to make the acceleration different, and that's the time scale. So I can either have 
the time scale as what I would expect, and then I could find out what distance scales there are, or I could say the distance scale is correct and find out the time scale. So here's the same plot, but and I've rescaled the video such that one apple is 75 or about seven centimeters wide instead of 75, and I get uh, an acceleration of 78.6 meters per second squared. But here I'm calling these fake seconds. It's not the real time. I can do the same thing and I can solve for the real time and I get one fake second is 2.83 seconds. So the game's uh, in slow motion really. So what, what we can do is to then fix the video so that you have the correct size and the correct acceleration but it has to go faster. Okay, so I did that. Here's what it looks like. Here's the video on the left in the correct speed and then the video on the right is the actual gameplay. It's the same stuff. And you can see right here why the game is the way it is. Why is the game so much slower and why do you get this either um, giant fruit or running too fast? Because it's just, it wouldn't be very easy to play. It wouldn't be very easy to play in the real speed. It's just too fast. So they slow it down so that it makes it more enjoyable to play. No one wants to play a game that's impossible. Except for Flappy Birds. And the same thing's true for Angry Birds and a lot of other games. You have to change the physics in order to make it a nice and playable game. So that's Fruit Ninja and the physics of Fruit Ninja.